Let your license need saving Do the wise thing Call Wise Man Lawyers Let your license need saving Do the wise thing Call Wise Man Lawyers Don't face that court alone Let the wise man team get you back on the road Does your license need saving Do the wise thing So I'm at Beanley Magistrates Court, client was charged with repeat high range drink driving. This time it was a reading of 0.281, so 0.281. Uh, it was her fourth DUI and her third high range. Previous readings of 0.355, uh, one before that 0.298, and the one before that 0.051. Um, I won't say fortunately, but uh, Lucky for her, uh, they weren't within the last five years. If any of those had been within the last five years, um, we would have been in dire straits. And if there was two high range in the last five years, it would have been mandatory jail. But as I said, so today, 0 0.281, uh, previous a bit over five years ago of 0 0.355, another one of 0 0.298, and another one of 0 0.051. Uh, to put it in perspective, if someone's got their third uh, high range in five years, it's mandatory imprisonment. So the magistrate has no choice but to hand down imprisonment. Um, as I said, given that they weren't in the last five years, uh, imprisonment was not mandatory. But given uh, that this is, as I said, the third very high range and fourth DUI uh, in total, um, even though jail wasn't mandatory, uh, it would have been a live option in the magistrate's mind. So needless to say, my job was doing everything I can to try and avoid uh, imprisonment as opposed to simply uh, saving her licence or minimising uh, the disqualification. As you'd expect, uh, a number of steps needed to be taken to prepare for today. Uh, got a, to attend uh, a reformatory course, uh, the one that we get all of our clients to do, the big uh, course. We give clients a few options, but when it's high risk of jail, uh, we insist on the, uh, the longer and more in-depth course. She did that. Got her to uh, seek, uh, well, she was already getting mental health uh, treatment, but to step that up a bit and get sort of documentary evidence that she was trying to get on top of her problems. Uh, I drafted detailed written submissions of the case law. Um, as I said, when there's a high risk of jail, you can't just go to court hoping for the best or, you know, saying please and thank you. You need some meat to for the magistrate to bite into. So when I say meat, you know, summaries of the legislation and case law. Uh, the written submissions of the draft had had about five cases where persons had offended as badly, if not slightly, in my mind, worse, and either had, they, they all got imprisonment, but uh, they were given terms of imprisonment that were, or well, most of them were given terms of imprisonment that were able to be served in the community. So what I mean by that is um, imprisonment doesn't always mean custody. Uh, imprisonment can be served in a number of ways and it's not the choice of the person being sentenced it's the choice of the magistrate but you know worst case is actual custody going to jail a step back from that's immediate parole which basically means you've technically gone to jail but today's your release date and you're now on parole for however long the uh, remainder of the imprisonment period is and by parole if you don't know basically you've just got to report to the parole board and do what they say when they say essentially Step back from that's what's called an intensive correction order, which is much the same as uh, immediate parole, but I guess on the scale of things, if it, when it's on your history, it doesn't look quite as bad. But practically speaking, you don't go to jail and you're effectively on parole for a period. Step back from that's a wholly suspended term of imprisonment, which basically means um, you leave court and that's the end of it, and the term of imprisonment hangs over your head during the suspension period. So let's say you get six months jail, suspended for 12 months. For the next 12 months, six months of jail is hanging over your head. If you can go 12 months without doing anything wrong, it vaporises. But if you do get charged with anything in, you know, in punishable with imprisonment, and a lot of things are, um, not just seemingly serious things, a lot of trivial or seemingly trivial matters uh, technically can be, be uh, punished with imprisonment. Uh, the, the imprisonment, which is suspended, can drop down and you'll serve it. That said, I've had clients in that position and I've managed to keep them out of jail by uh, either having the suspended imprisonment converted to immediate parole or having the, uh, persuading the magistrate to extend the uh, term of the uh, suspension or the suspended imprisonment. 
but anyway, what I'm getting at is um, there's a number of options uh, available to a magistrate when imprisoning someone, and not all of them mean you actually uh, serve custody. Uh, the next step back from that, uh, like going down on the scale of severity, is probation. Probation isn't a punishment as such, uh, it's a supervisory order. So, probation is similar to parole in the sense that you go to the probation and parole uh, organisation, report when you're supposed to, do whatever mental health or alcoholism courses and treatment you need to do. Uh, so practically speaking, it's essentially the same as parole, uh, but it obviously looks a hell of a lot better on your uh, history, and it's, a, it's not punishment. The magistrate can't give you probation unless you agree to it. So it's a supervisory order, so the magistrates will say, look, you need help, I'd like to give it to you, I can't give it to you unless you consent uh, and if you consent, as I said, it's a supervisory order. Obviously, if you refuse, the magistrate's not going to go backwards and give you a fine. He's going to go up uh, to the next, or he or she's going to go up to the next uh, level on the scale, being wholly suspended imprisonment. So if you if you go to court and the magistrate's offering you probation and you start saying no, you're going to get some form of imprisonment. And obviously, uh, that wouldn't have been a good thing. Um, so I draft those written submissions. Uh, you know, got the client to do everything I asked him to do. I prepared my yeah, verbal submissions before today. Met the client at court. We grabbed a conference room, ran through everything, procedure, what they can expect me to say, what they can expect the magistrate to say, um, what they can expect the prosecutor to say. Uh, we went in, uh, and I just, as a starting point, I just said to the magistrate, look, the short version of what I'm here today uh, for is to persuade you I'm to let my client go home. So I just, sometimes it's just, You've got to get to the point and then flesh it out. Um, there's no point in prattling on for half an hour with the magistrate wondering where you're going with it and what you're getting at. So I just, yeah, Your Honour, I'm here to try to persuade Your Honour to let my client go home. I'll flesh it out in a moment, but that's the short version. Uh, and then it was when it was my chance to speak, uh, I did exactly that. Fleshed out, you know, her underlying issues, uh, background, what's led to her ongoing uh, alcoholism and offending, um, but the steps she's taken since to get on top of it, the performatory courses he's done, uh, etc. Um, and just so yeah, just, just to rehash what we were dealing with. So today it was 0.281, priors of 0.355, 0.298 and 0.051. Uh, the short version is A, I was able to persuade the magistrate not to give imprisonment. Um, B, uh, I was able to persuade the magistrate that probation was appropriate. Uh, and obviously my client uh, consented to that. Um, and C, even though my job wasn't really one of getting the disqualification down, it was all about keeping her out of jail, I was able to persuade the magistrate to give what I believe, given her history in the reading, was a good uh, disqualification length. So she got uh, 18 months probation, so that basically means for the next 18 months, she reports to probation as they seem fit. Uh, and they'll make sure she's on the straight and narrow, and as long as she does what she's told, uh, and doesn't breach it by not showing up or whatever. Uh, once she served the 18 months, that'll be the end of it. And she got a 12 month disqualification. So, as I said, with readings of 0.2 and above with no history, I always tell clients if I can get it under 12 months, that's a good outcome. A lot of the time I get it quite a bit under that. But um, yeah, with that reading, 0.281, and with you know three previous being uh, too high range, as I said, 0.355. Uh, and 0.298, 12 months of disqualifications, in my mind, a very good outcome. So, as I said, 12 months of disqualification, 18 months uh, probation. Clients obviously very relieved. Uh, I'm Andrew Wiseman at Bean Lee Magistrates Court. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Andrew Wiseman from Wiseman Lawyers, Queensland's only truly dedicated drug, alcohol, and traffic events law firm. If you face loss of license, loss of vehicle imprisonment, or anything in between, at any court in Queensland, we can and will help you today. This is our specialty. This is all we do. Give us a call, 1300 947 352. I look forward to helping you resolve your issue today. Don't face that court alone.